call the Human Services Committee on Water. Will you begin, please, with the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Department of Social Services, I'm John O'Neill. I got nothing. Any questions for John? No. Good, good job. <laughs> yeah, great. No kidding. Thank you. Mental health, Steve Valley. Morning, I have no report, but I'm willing to answer questions. Any questions or concerns with Steve? Okay. Public Health, Linda Beers. Good morning. I just wanted to call your attention to, um, in front of you is a 2015 annual report. So it's all the meetings and all the wonderful accomplishments the Public Health Department did in 2015. So you have a copy of that. And I'd also like the board's permission to invite Katie Walton up. She's a new employee for the Health Department. She took um, the cancer screening position. And I wanted just to in, um, introduce her to you today. Can I bring her? Thank you, Katie. Come on up. So I'll let Katie talk, for, tell you what her program's about. She also gave you a sheet on it and a nice mouse pad. Hello, everybody. I'll be pretty short. I know you're busy. Um, like she said, my name is Katie Walton. I was born and raised in Jay. I went to Plattsburgh State, and here I am in public health. Um, I'm enjoying it a lot. Uh, I'm with Cancer Services Program. Um, what I do is public outreach um, and public education. So I'm pretty much the liaison between the community who are underserved, whether they have no insurance or they're underinsured. And I link them up with um, providers in the community that do cancer screenings if they meet the eligibility requirements. Um, it's a great program because not only is it free screening, if there's something that comes up in their testing that's abnormal, it covers diagno diagnostics as well as um, if it's unfortunately cancer, we have a Medicaid program that uh, we can put them into, and I'm receiving training on that in Albany this month, so that's exciting. Um, and we're going into policy work, so I'm going to be working with local businesses just to see if they are willing to cooperate with us in um, offering flex time or paid leave for their employees to just make a healthier community. So that's who I am, what I'm doing, so it's nice to meet all of you, and I'll see you around. Any questions for Katie? Welcome aboard. Thank you. It's nice to meet everyone. <laughs> okay. Um, office. Okay, a resolution to accept and file for an annual report. Okay, a resolution to accept and place on file for an annual report. Thank you. I'm sorry. Mr. Pelini. <laughs> 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 We need a second, Mr. Mayor. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Opposed? Carried. Transportation. I need a copy of the report. Oh, thank you. Yeah, office for the aging. That's okay. Um, I have no resolutions. I just would like to give a couple of quick updates. Um, first and um, foremost, we have our farmers market coupons that have arrived um, for the new supervisors. Um, this is a program that NYSOFA operates um, each year, and it provides um, eligible households with a coupon booklet of twenty dollars that they can use at the local farmers market. In years past, um, households were only eligible for one coupon booklet. This year, um, we are very pleased to announce that all individuals 
that meet the age requirement, which is obviously 60 and over, um, as well as the income guidelines, um, will be able to receive that coupon booklet. So now husband and wife are able to receive that, and instead of $20, they're eligible for 40 So that's a great boost to the economy, um, as well as um, offering those individuals access to fresh fruits and vegetables. Um, so the staff are out at the sites delivering them, at some of your town halls delivering them, and doing home visits. So um, if anybody knows of any of your constituents that would be um, potentially eligible or interested, give us a jingle and we'll make sure that we get out to them. Um, the guidelines for one person household is $18.32 a month, two person um, $2,470, three person $3,108, and as they go up it increases by I believe $642. Um, second quick update is next Friday, July 22nd, um, at Champlain Valley Senior Community, they will be hosting a um, what they're calling the Senior Fair. Um, they've asked us to collaborate and um, basically help with marketing and getting agencies and programs there. So all older adults and their caregivers are welcome to attend. That's from 10 to 3. Um, and like I said, the agencies and programs will be set up so that way it'll be a one-stop shop for these individuals to learn more about um, programs and um, agencies that could be beneficial to them. That's it. Any questions? Any questions for Chrissy? Yes. Chrissy, just a couple questions. Um, now that we've made the change over, have, how are your seniors, everybody's fine? Any complaints, the program's working as it did before? Um, to the merger? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, to, nothing has been addressed to me. Um, Senior-wise, um, program-wise, I have not changed anything nope. um, at this time. Yeah, we've had no, in the town of Keene, feedback either, so you're doing a great job. Uh, secondly, the uh, coupon dates that you come to the town halls, has that been set for the towns? That has been set in most cases. Um, I can't tell you off the top of my head when Keene is. Okay. Um, I will, um, I'll have Wendy reach out to you. Um, I know that she met with the senior club, I'm pretty sure, a week and a half ago. Um, so I'll, I'll have her reach out to you. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? Yes. Um, actually, the question isn't for Chrissy as much as for Bill, but enlighten me a little bit because I wasn't here when the proposed merger took place. And I guess the merger isn't complete, if I'm understanding, because you're still waiting for um, affirmation from the Office of the Aging. Yeah. I have heard not so much about the services as the fear that things will change. I guess I'd like to know the thought process as to why it was done, how much money we're saving by doing it, and um, basically because I have heard from a lot of people on this, um, so I just for my own curiosity. We, well, let me, let me just address it. Um, the, the process is that we're, we are at the point where Office for the Aging, the State Office for the Aging needs to make the final approval. Um, that's pending um, in my own park, so to speak. i got to finish a report to the board and to a report that will be used for the State Office for the Aging. Um, for, in terms of what was saved, we saved about 100000 by uh, making the merger between um, aging and public health. Um, there was no real change um, to any of the staffing or any of the um, services that were provided. Um, in fact, I think um, it's safe to say that the waiting lists that were there prior to have been cut back. There's also been, I think, significant amount of um, communication that occurs now between public health and aging um, that did not occur before. So I think there's a benefit to that. And, and, and I'll lay those out to you um, in terms of what those are. Um, in terms of um, the merger, you know, what happens is once um, we get a report ready and finished, um, um, my intent would be that that would be submitted um, throughout the county to all interested individuals um, for their opportunity to review and look at those, um, look at the report the way it's been constructed. And then we would then schedule a public hearing, um, which would provide for anybody who wanted to provide feedback um, to the board and to the um, management as a, as a whole would have that opportunity to do so. 
um, after that, I think it's 20 days after the public hearing or 30 days, I'm not sure which, 30, 30 days after that, um, we submit to um, the office for the state office for aging for, for final approval. I really honestly think that the fear of the unknown is more than um, the actual changes that are occurring. Um, you know, one of the things that struck me as, as I've been doing the report is that um, not only New York State Office for the Aging, but New York State Department of Public Health has been um, aggressively pursuing a one-stop shop for services. Um, we received a grant um, which specifically addressed that. In, that's essentially what we're trying to do as well. We're trying to set up um, the ability for uh, seniors to uh, make that phone call or make that contact either to aging or to public health. And if their need happens to be a little bit different for that one particular agency, there is a there would be a um, natural handoff from one department to the other. Um, and it's it's frankly a better way to do um, business. And and I believe strongly that what we're doing is better for the public and better for the seniors as a whole. Well, that that uh, handoff should have been there automatically, being how they're housed in the same building, serving the same same uh, group of people. Um, so, so the hundred thousand dollars, where was that saved then? Well, it was the director salary that was not paid um, and it was not filled, and then we reduced. Um, I'm not sure exactly, but I, I'll get you those numbers. They they will be in the report exactly what they are. Thank you. So, in, in a quick summary, we realize that uh, you've saved $100,000. There's no change in staff or in service. And one of the end results is there is better communication. Moving forward, we do have a definitive uh, timeline with this process whereby all questions can be uh, uh, answered. Uh, our further concerns in regards to this. Yes. Mr. Pallini, too. Okay. How did we save $100,000? Again, it was in not replacing the director's position. Um, the, the director left to go to emergency services. Um, we did not replace that position. Now, if you had, you know, obviously you were paying the director when she she took that amount of money, so to speak, out of the county budget and moved to emergency services. Had you filled her position, you would have paid on top of what you paid in emergency services. So the 100000 comes from that position. I'll, I'll give you the floor next. Uh, Mr. Politi, you have questions? Uh, Chrissy, the question I have is with regard to the coupon program. Yep. Is it online? It is not online. They actually have to physically come and um, meet with one of the staff. No, I, I mean in terms of information. When you, go, when you go to the county website, is there something when you hit the home page that says that you may be eligible for this program? It's, it's on our website, but we can definitely make sure that it's I on I think it should be on the main yep. page. Yep. And we put um, other media outlets, including Facebook, and there's posters on the community, but we'll definitely make sure it's on the forefront. Thank you. Welcome. Mr. Scott, on the on the savings, the well, obviously that was Patty's salary and French and so on. So Chrissy moved into Patty's position as acting director. Well, right now she is. Yes. Um, and so I'm trying to remember at budget time. So was the plan if, if we'd have put Chrissy in as head of the office for the aging? In other words, took Patty's title over. I don't think we had planned to replace Chrissy. Well, that was never discussed, whether you were going to or not, because it, the, the board authorized me. This is not something I made up. The board authorized me to do the, the merger the way it was laid out in the budget. The, um, I mean, I've had some concern from, from, from my seniors in regards to this, as I think other towns have. I mean, there may be a big misunderstanding out there, but how many other counties are doing this? 
they all have the exact count. There's quite a few, um, and, and they do. The mergers range from there are some counties that actually merged youth in uh, aging. There are some counties that uh, merged aging with um, DSS. Um, we've chosen public health because, frankly, I think public health not only physically for us is a better fit, but I think it makes more sense in the long run. I mean, services that public health provides is important to the seniors as well as the aging services. And just so I understand, so before the process is completed, there'll be a public hearing, and obviously mm -hmm. we will hear public comment at that point in time, That's and then correct. ultimately after the hearing, after we weigh what was the comments at the hearing and written, written comments, then we will make a decision as this board whether to move forward or not move forward, correct? Well, you already directed me to do it. So the, the uh, you know, you could at some point do a resolution saying, no, you don't want to do the resolution that you already approved. So what's the point of the public hearing? It's required by the New York State Department of Aging. For what reason? If we've already made that decision, well, why? Because, uh, again, New York State Office for the Aging is not approving your merger. They're approving your plan, and tied to that plan is their funding. So if they don't like the plan, they can deny you the funding. You know, we receive about a million dollars in funding from the state. Um, the local share is about 1.3 million. So the local share is higher than what the state's share is. So when you're talking about approval from the right. state, you're talking about approval for a plan that is funded by them. If they don't like it, they can say, no, we're not going to provide you with the funding. What if our constituents don't like it? Then I guess you, this board always has the option That's my of backtracking. I mean, the public, the the public can just say no. The public hearing isn't just a window dressing. Then. This is after we Absolutely re not. I mean, again, it's up to this board. You know, and this is one of the things I point out in the, in the report is that ultimately the first step always has to be this Board of Supervisors. As, a, as the county manager, I'm not going to go ahead with some kind of a plan to consolidate departments and change the structure of, of county government without knowing for certain that's the direction the Board told me to go. So step one always has to be the Board of Supervisors. Step two was the Department of Public Health. Would this, the second step, which they approved um, glowingly, so to speak. They said, oh yeah, it's actually a very good plan, okay? But the second step required was that the public health department would accept aging into um, the department. And again, that's a funding issue, okay? Again, county governments can structure their departments any way they choose. It's a question of how you get funded and whether that approval is there for the funding. The third step is the last step is the Office for the Aging approval. I find it hard to believe that everybody else has approved this in this New York State Office for the Aging would not. It's a solid plan. It takes into account the services. We have not reduced anybody's services. We have cut the waiting list. And I think we're doing a better job of county government by doing this. If the New York State Department of Aging has a problem with some portion of the plan, you have the option to adjust the plan, whether that means going back to a standalone office for the aging department, or whether that means making some adjustments to the plan as submitted. But that's your choice. Thank you. Well, Mr. Pelletti, so obviously they, they, the Office of the, aging, the State um, sent you a report. Sometime. Well, they will. Your plan. Yeah, we will have to submit a plan, yeah. and then they they will respond. They will respond. And, absolutely. And this board will get a copy of the response. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. Just as you did with the report from public health that said the letter from public health saying they accept the bus the, the consolidation. Like Dan said, after 30 days um, after the public hearing, um, I have to submit what they call it attachment C, um, and that's to an addition to our plan. And like Mr. Scott's father says, that it takes into account um, public comment, um, the report that um, Dan is presenting, and then they have an attachment C committee that meets and reviews everything and then responds back to the county. Other questions? Yes. Good comment. Uh, after I had you know, three or four people, some of them retired uh, from the county, uh, speak to me about 
as you shoot, as you, I would have voted no to begin with after they brought some things to light. But, uh, and I, I thought too, after a public hearing, we would make a uh, <coughs> final decision. I guess that's what they said. But uh, as it stands right now, I would be against it. Any other questions or concerns for Chrissy? Thank you, Chrissy. Thank you. Transportation. Good morning. I don't have anything to report. Any questions for Nancy? Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. Any other uh, concerns uh, for the Human Services Committee? We are adjourned. Thank you.